I'm Carrie Rogers. I'm an assistant professor in the Division of Hematology at The Ohio State University. And uh, we recently published the use of ibrutinib in classic and variant hairy cell leukemia. So this was a study that uh, first opened in 2013 and was sponsored by the National Cancer Institute through the Cancer Therapy Evaluation Program. It was a multi-site study that was led at Ohio State uh, and is actually still ongoing. And we looked at the use of ibrutinib to treat hairy cell leukemia patients um, who were in kind of a difficult to treat category, or we didn't really expect them to benefit from purine analogs. So these are patients with classic hairy cell leukemia who had received at least one prior purine analog therapy or people with a variant of hairy cell leukemia where we know that uh, purine analogs don't really optimally benefit them. Given the extremely good disease outcomes for most patients with purine analogs, uh, some people don't really consider kind of the group of hairy cell patients that aren't benefiting from purine analogs, like those with a short remission duration of less than two years, those with prior purine analog neurotoxicity that can't take them or those who are unfit to receive them. And really there's a, there was an unmet need for therapies uh, for this kind of population and hairy cell leukemia. And that's what we were aiming at. Uh, we reported the first 37 patients treated in the study. It is now fully accrued um, at 44 patients. So we do expect to update this. Um, but given that we had at least six years of experience, we felt it was very important uh, to publish this, to put the information on ibrutinib out there so that patients treating hairy cell leukemia um, could start to use this. Uh, what we found is the overall response rate was just over 50%. It was around 54%, uh, which sort of like underplays a little bit the benefit to these patients because the estimated 36-month progression-free survival was 73%. So that's almost three-fourths of the patients alive and without leukemia progression at three years. And that's really outstanding for this very high-risk population. Just to give you some idea, uh, the median duration of leukemia was almost 10 years, like the median time from diagnosis, and the median number of prior therapies was four. We also had nine of our 37 patients um, having the variant of hairy cell leukemia, which is a fairly high number of the variant. So this is really a group that we would not expect to benefit from purine analog therapy. So it's really nice to see um, this kind of overall response rate and certainly this progression-free survival. We found the adverse events were very similar to what is seen with ibrutinib and other diseases, and there wasn't anything unusual. The study did explore two doses, both 420 and 840, and settled out on 420 as the uh, dose moving forward for the study. Um, that's a licensed dose in CLL. So I think really what we should all take away from this is that while it is not FDA approved for hairy cell leukemia, ibrutinib can be used off-label in select hairy cell leukemia patients where it might be more beneficial than purine analogs um, or other drugs in this space. Um, so moxitumab pseudotox uh, would be an option for certain patients, but isn't appropriate for everybody. And then vemurafenib has uh, had some uh, use in hairy cell leukemia, but is only suitable for those with the BRAF B600E mutation, which is mostly classic patients. So uh, there is this kind of um, population where there's an unmet need in hairy cell leukemia that might really benefit from ibrutinib. Uh, so I'm really glad that uh, our um, initial results of this phase two study were published in blood because now um, physicians can start to use this if appropriate for their individual patient. Ibrutinib was actually added to the NCCN guidelines for treatment of hairy cell leukemia based on this study. Um, so I'm just really excited about the results and really uh, look forward to updating them as we get more experience with ibrutinib. And it was just really exciting to describe the uh, use of a brand new drug in this rare leukemia.